mercy upon us. Alleluia. And grant us your salvation.
happy with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was among them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, when we have looked and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, 
we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. 
but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If Jesus is really raised from the dead, what does that mean? Is Jesus alive in some real way, or is this just wishful thinking? And if it's real, what does it mean for us and for the world? Those, I think, are some of the questions that those terrified followers of Jesus are asking behind locked doors. It is hard to imagine the trauma that they have gone through in the last week. From the triumphal march into Jerusalem with the hope that Jesus had finally come to drive out the Romans, to the events of the week where Jesus seemed to be setting himself up to be arrested, to that deeply intimate evening meal where he washed their feet and gave them bread and wine to be his body and blood. And finally, to the gruesome, hideous afternoon when the sky turned dark and the one they thought was their Lord and Savior died. But not finally, because now the women who had gone to the tomb are convinced that he is alive and that he has appeared and spoken to them. They are exhausted and in shock. And in that moment, Jesus comes to them. Peace be with you. And he answers the question of whether this is really he by showing them his hands and his side. It is the wounds that prove his reality. And then he does something extraordinary. Instead of staying there and giving them comfort and letting them bask in the joy of his presence, Jesus sends them out into the world. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathes on them. We know about God's breath. It is the breath that moved over the waters of creation. It is the breath that gives life to humankind. It is the divine breath which Jesus gives his disciples. He gives them nothing less than the power of God. He doesn't give them energy or courage or motivation. He gives them divine power to forgive or retain sins. These are, you will remember, the people who only a few days before deserted him and fled. These are the same people who only a few minutes before were hiding behind a locked door for fear of their lives. This would seem an unlikely choice, but then it is so like God to choose unlikely people. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
Jesus comes to his disciples where they are. He gives them hope, he gives them reassurance, and then he gives them the power to go out into the world and to continue the work of healing and reconciliation. It has always seemed to me that the definitive proof of the resurrection is that transformation of people deep in shock and grief into a powerful, joyful, and committed community. Only God could do that. And here we are today, the disciples of this place and time. We have our own locked doors that we hide behind, our own fears and questions. Can we believe that Jesus is really alive? Can we touch his wounds, which are in the anguish and suffering of this world, and believe that Jesus is there? Can we trust Jesus to give us real comfort and strength? Do we dare to receive the breath of God? Do we dare to go out to spread this message to the world? The writer of the first letter of John certainly believed it. This letter was probably written 60 or 70 years after the events that we heard about in today's gospel. And the passion and certitude of this generation removed writer are as fresh as if they were brand new. And the testimony of believers over the last two millennia continue to reverberate with that same certitude and passion. The promise of Jesus to his disciples in that locked room is still good. Jesus is in this world alive, standing with the poor and the marginalized, healing and reconciling, even in the face of the greatest evil. Jesus is with each of us, meeting us where we are and giving us what we need to believe. And I believe that if we allow Jesus to enter our locked rooms, that he will breathe on us and that we will be given power to stand with him, to bring forgiveness, justice, and new life to a world that so badly needs it. Alleluia, Christ is risen.
gathered as believers who are one in heart and soul, let us pray through Jesus, the Son of God, gloriously risen from the dead, saying, Alleluia, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Paula, our bishop, for Charles, our rector, and for Anne, our celebrant and preacher today. We pray for our assisting priests and deacons and our religious brothers, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Episcopal Anglican province of Alexandria, that through the gift of the Spirit, we may recognize God's presence with us. Alleluia, hear our prayer. For this parish family of atonement, for Amanda and Dave, our wardens, for all in Chiapas, Mexico this past week, uh, who are strengthening Atonement's partnership with St. Benedict's Parish. We pray for Alex, Alba, Charles, Sina, Aaron, Richard, and Father Charles, that we who have not seen the risen Lord and yet have come to believe may be blessed in sharing the peace and forgiveness we have received. Alleluia, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are wounded in any way, especially the people of Ukraine, Gaza, and Israel, for all victims of gun violence, especially in our neighborhood in Chicago, that we may see Christ in the wounds of those around us and be instruments of healing and peace in their lives. Alleluia, hear our prayer. For our families, friends, companions, and all whom we love, in thanksgiving for the birthdays of Robert G., Tim Van Alstyne, Leonard Carmella, Mui Wiawini, David Potter, and John Mulder, priest, and for the anniversaries of Stephen Zeke Rhenesius and Jason Oliveira and Lydia Terrio, that we may be open to God's love and forgiveness, which God abundantly pours out for us. Alleluia, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need of our prayers, remembering especially all whom we pray for daily. Today, we pray in particular for Tony, Tom, Scott, Dwayne, Gordy, Jolene, Kelly, Thomas and Greg, priests, Eleanor Francis, religious, Richard, pastor, and all who we name silently or aloud. That the Spirit will renew in them the gift of life. Alleluia, hear our prayer. We pray for all the newly baptized, especially Rachel, that their faith may continue to grow and that they may be generously offer loving service to those in need. Alleluia, hear our prayer. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Blessed William Law, Gregory the Great, and all the saints, let us offer our prayers for all who have died, remembering especially all whom we pray for daily. Today, we pray in particular for Tim Yeager, priest, Thomas Gumbleton, bishop, Edward Rodman, priest, the World Central Kitchen aid workers killed in Gaza, Rick Olson, Gladys Parker, Holly Adam, and those we name silently or aloud. That they may now rejoice and be glad in fellowship with the risen Christ. Alleluia, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We are not For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the announcements are in your bulletin. You are all welcome. If this is your first Sunday here, there are pew cards, and should be a pew card in the in the seat back in front of you. If you would fill that out and give it to one of the ushers, or leave it in the back, so that we can know that you were here and welcome you appropriately. Um, the announcements. I want to just call your attention to two and trust that you will read the others and do with them what you need to do. Um, the first is that we still have some tickets left for the April fundraiser, which is Friday, April 12th at 6 o'clock. Um, please do. You can use the, the QR code or go onto the website to get those tickets. It's a wonderful chance. I've been to a couple of them now, and it's a wonderful chance to meet people and talk to people that you may not have known or talked to before, um, and a chance to really get to know each other in a very different setting than this, as, as well as raising a little money for the church, which is always a good thing. Um, the other thing that I want to draw your attention to is that next Wednesday, no, not Wednesday, Wednesday, April 17th. Yes, that's next Wednesday. How did that happen? Anyway, April 17th, is Evensong, and please mark your calendars for that. If you've never been to an Evensong, it's, again, a wonderful opportunity to do something different than we do on Sunday mornings, to, to listen and to pray and, and be able to just relax into scripture and music um, in a way that we don't necessarily on Sunday mornings. And in full disclosure, yes, I sing with the choir, but still. Anyway, it is a wonderful opportunity, um, so please do mark your calendars for that. The others I will let you um, do with what you need to. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this praise to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, 
for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Gregory the Great and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, <clears throat> now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 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 Lord,
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace who brought from, again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah.